I'm not a superstar. I'm an ass kicker. I am Brock Lesnar. An NCAA Division I champion. He couldn't do it. It was a near impossible task. A WWE superstar. Lesnar just, he just caught Van Damme in midair. Oh, Would you like to face Conor McGregor in a WWE ring? Man, I, I take shits bigger than that kid, all right? <laughs> and a UFC heavyweight kingpin. A behemoth of strength and athleticism, the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar has taken out some of the absolute icons of MMA and wrestling to reach the height of highs in combat sports. Great. I really do. I really, he was he's so a freak. strong. Nobody, he's a freak. Nobody I remember cutting that much to heavyweight. In today's video, we dive deep into Brock Lesnar's extraordinary MMA journey, his meteoric rise in the UFC and the lasting legacy he's left behind. So, buckle up for this one-of-a-kind ride. I think it was like day 49 after I left. Like, I can't remember the exact hour. I feel fucking awesome. Why does it matter? I'm here. Born and raised in Webster, South Dakota, Brock Lesnar's journey in sports began at Webster High School, where he excelled in football and wrestling even securing third place in the state championships during his senior year. He continued wrestling pursuit at Bismarck State College, earning fifth place in the 275-pound division during his freshman year and clinching the championship in his sophomore year. Lesnar's talent then led him to the University of Minnesota on a wrestling scholarship. His collegiate career was remarkable, culminating in an NCAA Division I Heavyweight Wrestling Championship win in the year 2000, after finishing as the runner-up the previous year. You know, I, I wanted to get the first takedown, but uh, I'll take the win. I'm so happy. Uh, I've worked hard. Wes is a competitor. Uh, I've enjoyed wrestling Wes, you know, but I know I deserve it more than he did. Lesnar left an indelible mark on college wrestling, with a remarkable record of 106 wins and five losses across four years, before turning to professional wrestling in 2000 and joining the World Wrestling Federation. There's a high risk in pro wrestling. I mean, it's that ring is not just, you know, mom's California king-size bed with uh, some Baylor twine going around it. I mean, it's, you land, you know, it's, it's a physical ring, you know. In WWF, which is now WWE, he won multiple championships against the biggest names of that era, including Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Bill Goldberg. Six years into his professional wrestling career, however, Lesnar decided to take up the more brutal form of combat, mixed martial arts. Kathy, what do you think? Let's go. Whoa. Making his debut against Kim Min Soo at Dynamite USA in the summer of 2007. Right, hook him up, gentlemen. Good luck. The fight between Lesnar and Min Soo was short and one sided, with Lesnar showcasing his superior size, strength, and wrestling skills. Lesnar took Kim down early in the first round and controlled the fight on the ground. As soon as he delivered a barrage of punches and hammer fists, Min Su immediately tapped, forcing the referee to step in and put him out of his misery just one minute and nine seconds into the first round. The fight was a display of Lesnar's raw athleticism and power, and it served to solidify his presence as a rising star in the world of mixed martial arts. Owing to his remarkable debut, UFC President Dana White immediately signed Lesnar and matched him against grappling ace Frank Mir. Um, we prepared in this camp uh, you know, to, to fight Frank, and, and um, I've had a good training camp. You know, none of this, this is nothing new to me. The fight, which took place at UFC 81 in February 2008, started with Lesnar showcasing his superior wrestling skills. By taking Mir down early in the first round, he delivered a series of powerful ground and pound strikes and dominated the fight, up until a point deduction due to strikes to the back of the head, which are deemed illegal. One point, one point. Shortly after the point deduction, the momentum shifted and Mir was able to secure a knee bar on Lesnar, forcing him to tap out. 
This fight was a memorable one, and for several reasons. One, it showcased Lesnar's incredible athleticism and potential in MMA, while also revealing that he had more to learn in the sport. You go back to the drawing board every day in the workout room, no excuses. And two, it served as a stepping stone in Lesnar's career, as he would go on to become a dominant force in the UFC heavyweight division in the years that followed. Following his first loss, Lesnar bounced back with an impressive showing against Heath Herring and earned his shot at UFC heavyweight champion Randy Couture, with only two wins under his belt. The two legends battled for the ultimate glory at UFC 91 in late 2008. Couture was the reigning UFC heavyweight champion, making a comeback after a brief retirement. I can't tell you how excited I am to be back here. It's been an amazing 10-week training camp uh, to have all the other stuff gone. The black cloud is now gone. It's not following me around anymore. Brock poses some very interesting problems in his athleticism and his wrestling background. And I think uh, I've done my homework and I'm prepared and to go out. This is going to be a fantastic fight. While Brock Lesnar was a rising star in the heavyweight division. He is one of the most incredible athletes I've ever seen. One of the biggest human beings I've ever seen. It was a clash where Lesnar's size and wrestling background were pitted against Couture's legendary MMA skills and experience. Oh, the hand. The right hand. In the fight, Lesnar's superior size and strength were the difference as he used his wrestling and clinch to control Couture for the major part of the round. And now the big man in, the in the second round, Lesnar's striking overwhelmed Couture. The Beast Incarnate unleashed a barrage of punches to rock Couture and then followed up with ground and pound, forcing the referee to step in and stop the fight. Lesnar was declared the winner and the new UFC heavyweight champion by TKO. He also earned high praise from his rival. Do you think uh, Brock is more of a threat now than uh, Hador? No, I don't think so. I think, I think Fedor would, would probably tear Brock up at this point. I think Brock has a ton of potential, obviously. He's getting better each and every time he steps out. Uh, but he still has some holes in his game. I think uh, he knows that, but he's doing the right things to shore it up. A few months later at UFC 100, it's all over but the crying, baby. Lesnar defended his heavyweight title in a highly anticipated rematch against Frank Mir, the man who had handed him his first MMA loss. The atmosphere was hostile as Lesnar declined to touch gloves with Mir, given the heated rivalry between the two. The fight got underway, with Lesnar immediately going for a takedown. Mir's heavily taped left leg may have been a hindrance early on. Frank Mir's left leg is very, very taped up. Now, I don't know if that's because he's injured or because he wants friction. If he grabs a hold of something in a guard and he, wa he wants Brock Lesnar to not be able to slip out. From half guard, Lesnar began landing heavy elbows and punches. He controlled the fight with an iron fist, utilizing a headlock that resembled a one-arm half Nelson and delivering powerful strikes to Mir's face. Lesnar's ground and pound was relentless, alternating between controlling Mir's wrist and delivering punishing blows. The first round was utterly one-sided, and Mir looked battered and bruised. As the second round began, Lesnar refused to stay on the ground after an early takedown. Mir attempted to score with a knee strike, but then pulled guard on Lesnar. Against the cage, Lesnar continued his ferocious assault, effectively battering Mir with punches and elbows, until the referee intervened and put an end to the punishment. It was by far Lesnar's most dominant display inside the cage, and he was fired up even after the bot. Frank Mir had a horseshoe up his ass. I told him that a year ago. I pulled that some bitch out and I beat him over the head with it. Woo! I'm gonna go home tonight. I'm gonna drink a Coors Light. That's a Coors Light because Bud Light won't pay me nothing. And hell, I might even get on top of my wife tonight. See y'all later. Mir was simply outmuscled by a monster. Do we 
are you talking about? Yeah, he went into acting or he went into pro wrestling, but this guy's legitimate. You know, he's a real deal. You know, he, you know, high level wrestler here. Come on, man. Who's not the most physically incapable human being I've ever seen on top of that. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the, uh, like, because as you say, you're a big man yourself, lad, but he's just next level, isn't he? Like the size oh, of him was just crazy. Yeah, his, uh, from the waist up. I think from the waist down, actually, <laughs> I got him beat uh, leg-wise, you know what I mean? Like deadlifting and whatnot. But, uh, <laughs> but his back was unreal. I remember even when he was weighing in, I was looking at him. I was like, Jesus, that's a human being? While his showdown against Mir was a display of will and skill, his second title defense against Shane Carwin showcased Lesnar's resilience and grit, especially following his return after surviving diverticulitis. The highly anticipated clash of two powerhouse heavyweights went down at UFC 116 in the summer of 2010, when Carwin, an undefeated sensation, was expected to give the beastly champion a run for his money. In the first round, Carwin was all over Lesnar as he managed to take the fight to the mat and batter his opponent with big punches and hammer fists. Lesnar trying to push him off! At one point in time, Lesnar appeared to be in serious trouble, but despite absorbing an incredible amount of punishment, he showed incredible resilience to survive the round. She's not watching. She's covering her head and looking down. As the second round began, it was Lesnar's turn to show his mettle. He took an exhausted Carwin down and secured a dominant position on the ground. Vicious ground and pound. Gradually transitioning to a full mount, unlike Brock, Carwin was unable to defend effectively. Choke out Shane Carwin. Forcing the referee to step in and award the champion another impressive title defense. Lesner. Wow! Lesnar! Needless to say, Lesnar was on top of the world following his win over Carwin, but he still kept his feet on the ground. The first round, uh, he, he was better than me than the first round, but I showed a lot of heart. I showed, uh, you know, what what a true champion can be, and, and that's, you know, there's going to be guys come along to test you, you know? Unfortunately, everything went downhill for him from that moment onwards. In his very next fight, Lesnar suffered his first professional loss against one of the best heavyweight fighters of all time, Cain Velasquez. I want to fight the best guys. Those guys are the best guys, too, but right now, all my focus is on, you know, studying Brock and Los Angeles. Excited, excited to fight and uh, ready for it to, to be here. The battle of the two legends went down at UFC 121 in October 2010. Lesnar entered the fight as a slight favorite, and he was certainly prepared for another victory. Velasquez appeared to have prepared more, and he overcame all odds when the cage door closed. In the fight, Velasquez showcased his superior striking skills and excellent takedown defense. Well, but he wasn't able to take Kane down there. He kept Lesnar at bay with his striking and successfully defended against the Beast's takedown attempt. Came back up to his feet. The Mexican-American's speed, agility, and precision striking began to take a toll on Lesnar. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is huge. As the first round progressed, Velasquez continued to land clean shots on Lesnar and hurt him numerous times as Lesnar stumbled all over the cage. Velasquez conquered the beast in the final minute of the round when he badly hurt him and then finished the job with relentless ground and pound. With a monumental victory, Velasquez became the new UFC heavyweight champion. The first ever Mexican heavyweight. The loss was a tough pill to swallow for Lesnar. And in an attempt to bounce back into the win column, he battled one of the most feared strikers in the division, Alistair Overeem, at UFC 141 in December 2011. The fight was a title eliminator, with the winner earning a shot at the UFC Heavyweight Championship. Interestingly, Overeem was already guaranteed a shot at the winner of the heavyweight title fight between Cain Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos, but he skipped that in favor of a money fight with Lesnar. It was a risk, but one worth taking. As the cage door closed, Overeem showcased his striking prowess and devastating knees. He kept Lesnar at a distance with powerful leg kicks and precise strikes until one of Overeem's knees landed cleanly on Lesnar's midsection, changing the American's facial expressions. Lesnar couldn't weather Overeem's onslaught that followed and eventually fell to the canvas after taking a brutal kick to the liver. 
The referee stepped in to stop the fight in the first round, declaring Alistair Overeem the winner by TKO. In the aftermath, Lesnar retired from MMA. Even though Lesnar stated that he was putting an end to his MMA career in 2010, the UFC made a surprising announcement on June 4, 2016. They revealed that Lesnar would make a return to the Octagon at UFC 200, which was scheduled for July 9th. WWE, one of the things about Brock Lesnar is when that guy's ready to fight, he's not shy. At the time, Lesnar was signed with the WWE, who confirmed that they had allowed Lesnar to have a one-time opportunity to compete in UFC 200 before his return to WWE for SummerSlam on August 21st. In his fight at UFC 200, Lesnar fought the king of walk-off KOs, Mark Hunt, and he was overprepared. I was wondering how many rounds you were able to spar for this fight because 3, it all- 3,000, okay. 3,000. Since the kickboxing ace was a slightly favorable matchup, Lesnar displayed his dominance in the first and third rounds, using ground and pound to pummel his opponent. He's just getting... Ultimately, he secured a unanimous decision victory, which was later ruled a no contest due to a failed drug test on Lesnar's end. Despite that, Lesnar received a substantial UFC record purse of $2.5 million for the fight. That was the last time MMA fans saw fighting, but he did make an appearance in the octagon, challenging Daniel Cormier for the heavyweight title after DC's win over Stipe Miocic at UFC 226. Let me tell you something. I walked into this building and watched the heavyweight disasters from the beginning. McDonald's a piece of Miocic the piece of DC, I'm coming for you. Nevertheless, Brock Lesnar's MMA career left an indelible mark on the sport, characterized by a unique blend of athleticism, wrestling prowess, and sheer physical dominance, even though he was granted a special exemption on drug testing only to pop for steroids. Despite a relatively brief stint in the octagon, Lesnar achieved remarkable success, capturing the UFC Heavyweight Championship and defeating top-tier opponents. His foray into MMA not only elevated his profile, but also brought a new wave of mainstream attention to the sport. Lesnar's crossover appeal, from his wrestling background to his larger-than-life persona, drew fans from both the MMA and professional wrestling worlds. Love him or hate him, Lesnar's MMA career will be remembered as a chapter of excitement and spectacle, one that helped the UFC reach the heights of fame. If you enjoyed the video, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to our channel and activate those notification alerts. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to having you join us in our upcoming video.